Molly Ivins once said, bad policies, stupid policies, gutless policies have real consequences. Keep this in mind as we discuss today what the Australian government is not telling its citizens about the true condition of the economy. My name is Dr. David Wallalu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. By the way, Ross, I just saw a comment from one of our viewers, and guess what it says? Tell. It says that our channel deserves 70 million subscribers. I agree. I agree, too. If you've not subscribed yet, please do. Indeed. And we take this uh, opportunity to thank our Patreon members for their support, and for you, if you like our videos, consider subscribing to our Patreon membership. Thank you very much for your support. Back to our topic. You would hope by now that the government in Australia is ready to face up to reality. I know this might be a rather optimistic anticipation on my part, but the government is misrepresenting the current state of the Australian economy. What do you think, David? Well, indeed, Ross, the Australian economy's growth ain't gonna happen in 2021 as the central government is saying. And how did we come to this? Well, it came through, through some research we conducted and we found out that the chief economist of Westpac, and his name is, uh, I have his name right here, is Bill Evans. And we will have a link for you at the bottom of the description where we got this information. He ended up, you know, slashing the grading for the, the GDP of, of Australia from 2.4 to, to zero. zero. So it will be no growth, basically. Unlike what the central government in Canberra is saying, the economy is doing great and all that stuff. So it behooves the Australian people to know the truth. But it becomes the question of what's contributing to this lack of growth. You know, it must be no mystery to the people in Australia that there is a pandemic and the economy is hurt by that. Also, they must know that the relationship with China has taken a wrong turn. That's correct. Well, let's start with the last one, the latter, the uh, China-Australia relations from an economic perspective. Well, we all know how we started. And in case you didn't know, we will tell you <laughs> what started with. Of course, it started with when uh, Australia banned Huawei from operating in Australia. Then it was followed by blaming China for the pandemic, and let's demand an, demand an investigation. That's correct. Followed by Australia's view on Hong Kong. That's correct. Denouncing China and being very critical of China's policy toward Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. This led to some very bad feelings, and China was outraged. And you know, Ross, it would have been easier if Australia would have given China a heads up as to, hey, we're going to announce this. So this way China would not be caught off guard with the media frenzy regarding this. I do believe, and this is my personal opinion, if China would have been informed about this, they would have reacted differently. We won't see those economic tensions between China and Australia. Well, I'd raise a bigger question as to why did the government have to say, of Australia have to say anything? Maybe they were told by the U.S. Oh! <laughs> oh! Maybe they were told what to do. Well, you take a look at the consequences of this, and in a, we've already talked about this previously, mm -hmm. about the areas where China just said, we're not, we don't need your wine anymore. We don't need your barley anymore. We don't need your lobsters anymore. The we beef, don't, we don't need We don't that. need your beef anymore. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. And so, and more than that, you know, a whole lot of the costs of education in Australia are footed by Chinese Chinese, Chinese students. Students, right? I mean, when you take a look at 
262,000 Chinese students in Australian uh, ed universities paying the full ticket. What does that tell you? Exactly, and, and Australia lost on that now. That, that door is closed. Uh, I mean, you think about, if you go back, you realize that within the last 29 years, before 2020, the last 29 years, Australia was doing great economically because it was considered one of the top trade partners to China. Matter of fact, their growth mirrored what was going on in China. Exactly. They were lockstep into growth economy, the, the, the economically and prosperity. Exactly. Well, this year doesn't quite look that good. No, and this is why the government is telling the Australians what it's not happening on the ground. Even the forecast, at the time of this recording, there is a meeting of the uh, uh, Australia uh, Reserve Bank, of Bank, uh, 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 Central Bank of Australia, it's called RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia. There's a meeting where they're going to now be forced to backtrack their statements that was released a couple months ago. Oh, you mean tell the truth? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they were indicating that the economy is going to do well and all that stuff. It's not. You know, as we saw that, they were downgraded, their growth downgraded to zero for this year. That has very significant consequences everywhere. Yeah, and, and it's, 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 it's a fact. Because the tensions with China, and China only needed to do cut the trade off, it's really hurt the economy. Well, one of the people, one of the uh, foreign ministers, Chinese foreign ministers, mm -hmm. Zhou Lijian, he gave them a 14-point plan. He said, if you're going to do business with us, here's, some, here's what you've got to do. Mm -hmm. So one of the, two, two of the major points are mm -hmm. Huawei, hey, you cut out Huawei completely and stop criticizing us on our policies. D domestic issues. Our well, domestic yeah, issues, yeah, exactly in the, right. In the case of Huawei, because their argument is that uh, they're going to collect the information that passed to the government. I mean, there, there's this argument that Huawei is doing, which in reality, it's, it's not. Because they just, as a matter of fact, it paved the way now for Huawei to push forward with its own. To the point they came up now with uh, uh, an operating system called uh, Harmony. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe to them it was a blessing that that <laughs> door was closed and now they pushed forward with creating their own. No different than uh, the China Space Station. Oh, boy. When they were kicked out, out of the ISS, you know, they're saying, we'll, sure. We'll do our own. We'll build our own. So, But just to go back to the idea of the economy, where Australian economy is, and, and why this... Uh, 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 two pictures that have been presented to the Australians that are completely on the opposite end. The government saying the economy is great, is moving forward, is growing, and in reality it's not. We do have some of our subscribers live in Australia, and we kind of ask the questions, they live on the ground there, so they see what the reality is. They said, no, the government is lying. So, and now this forecast by the, uh, by, uh, what's his name, Bill, Bill Evans, highlighted this when you cut the growth from 2.4 to zero. So, what's interesting uh, about all this stuff for us is this is not only about the China tensions with Australia, but also about the lockdown that is taking place in Australia. What we have is major lockdowns mm -hmm. with seemingly little provocation. Yeah, it's, it's very alarming. To me, it's alarming when you lock people down. You're telling people to only to go out one hour out of their home in a democratic society like Australia? I mean, what's next? Well, how about internment camps? Although they're going to be called something else, but that's essentially what they are. Well, they are in process of building, as a matter of fact, three camps, one of them in the Northern Territories, one of them in, uh, actually, they just approved one for uh, Bisban, I believe. Uh, let me get the name right here for the city. Uh, uh, it's called, yeah, Brisbane, one of them. And one of them is being built in Melbourne. So if those are being built, what does it tell you? This is going to go for in the near future as well. And, and if you start locking people down, how do you expect the economy to grow? 
So we have lockdowns that keep people away from work. Mm -hmm. We have lockdowns that are going to put people in internment camps. And we have the Chinese situation with reduced exports to China. What can you expect? Exactly. And this is where now the Australians are faced with a very, very delicate choice. And the choice is, is that in 2022, which is just about a few months from now, they're going to be faced with elections. They can, up, they can out vote out the whole 150 members of the, <laughs> of the lower house. They have about 150 seats in the lower house, and they have about 80 seats in the upper house, an equivalency to Senate for us. You know. And it becomes the question of, you know, what is the, the government, Morrison's government is telling the Australians, you know, and some, based on some research that I conducted, I'm finding out Australians, some of them have already made up their mind. They're not going to be voting for Morrison. They want him out. And I do believe Australians are going to use their own judgment to see what's good for them. Because the government never, ever does anything good for you. <laughs> no. And this is not about just Australia, by the way. And we are not pointing fingers at Australia. We're just highlighting the facts because we do have our own problems here. Oh, and we have massive problems yeah, here. We have massive issues as well with how the government presenting information and so forth. We will get into that at some point. But the point is, is to highlight now where the current economy, uh, economic status of Australia in reality versus what the government is saying. And those two main uh, factors is the China tensions with Australia and now you add the lockdown to the mix. You know, most of the projections are, we're gonna see a major recession in Australia based on those two factors. And there are some members of the parliament that have been calling. As a matter of fact, one of them is called uh, Ali. Uh, her name is, uh, uh, if I remember her name, she's a member of the parliament and she's the one who called for uh, uh, the, the, the economy is heading into recession. So she was criticized badly for it. So, but, and this is where that cut is coming, the, the downgrading of the system. Now, I believe the, uh, the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, is forced now to backtrack its forecast that it's published about a few months ago because it doesn't hold with the reality. What would you say is the biggest takeaway from our show today? Well, it's how much the government lies. You know, if this happens in Australia, what makes us different? Oh, it doesn't make yeah. us different. Yeah, what well, makes us different? At all. Our government can lie to us as well. You know, it's a fact, it's reality. We're not going to shy away from saying that. And because the, the Australians in this case needs to decide, like we do when a time comes for us to elect our representatives, you know. But again, for us, it's a different story altogether because... We are sleeping. Some of us have no clue what's taking place in the country. Whether that's by design or by default, it's a subject to another conversation altogether. It's probably both. but I think so. I think so. Well, there is a conclusion here. And the conclusion is, if you know the truth, you at least have a choice. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.